say blacks hate blacks. It's not just a myth. Why is it we do not have the same respect for members of our race as we do for some other race, especially the white race? And that we were told, quite to the contrary, that we were from a land of savages, of cannibals. And except by the grace of God and the white man, we would have been a lost people. So we should be on our knees forever praying and thanking God that we were brought, even in slavery, to this land to escape the horrors of Africa. And this was brought in and drilled into us generation after generation. Africa. The second largest continent is an area of almost 12 million square miles in size. It is comprised of 50 independent countries and populated by over 537 million people who speak over 1,000 languages and dialects. For eons, Africa's wealth has been a magnet that has attracted the entire world. The continent has been plundered for its vast mineral and human resources. Traditional historians have viewed this land as one of primitive savages who slept through the millennia, contributing little to the cultural legacy of mankind. The facts, however, tell a different story. Scholars and scientists now concede that Africa is the birthplace of mankind. Africans were the first builders of civilization. They discovered mathematics, invented writing, developed sciences, engineering, medicine, religion, fine arts, and built the Great Pyramids, an architectural achievement which still baffles modern science. What caused the cradle of the world's oldest and greatest civilizations to crumble, leaving in its wake a people who are exploited, oppressed, and economically underprivileged? In a moment, Africa's downfall. Tony Brown's Journal is brought to you by Pepsi-Cola Company and your local Pepsi bottlers. Dr. Williams, it's an honor being able to, to meet with you and to talk with you. You have written what many of us consider to be the definitive work about the culture of Africans uh, throughout the world. And you approach it from the standpoint of the destruction of that civilization. Why did you choose the aspect of destruction rather than uh, some other point of view? The aspect of destruction was emphasized for the reason that it was quite clear that the black people in America seemed to be generally unaware that they had a history that they were told that they had achieved nothing. They were told... This man says the true facts are to be found in a more thorough and honest look at history. After Dr. Chancellor Williams, a native of Bennettsville, South Carolina, received his doctorate in history and sociology, he studied psychology, anthropology, archaeology, and economics. He also taught Arabic history and worked as a professor of history at Howard University for 29 years. He won an award from the Black Academy of Arts and Letters and was the first recipient of the 21st Century Foundation's Clarence L. Holt Prize for Excellence in Literature. Now, of course, the record uh, was there to show that much of Western civilization was built upon the foundation of the land where civilization itself had begun. And this was in Africa. Therefore, uh, the focus had to be on Africa to see to what extent uh, the r recent revelations with the turn of the uh, century, at the turn of the century, that Africa was the cradle of civilization. To what extent could this be actually verified? And so my work was directed in the uncovering uh, much of what had been lost, much of what had been disguised, much of what had been uh, stolen, refurbished, reworked, and presented to Western civilization as the work 
brought from Africa but presented to Western civilization as the creation of Western man. Dr. Chancellor Williams spent 16 years writing his book, and although a piece of extraordinary research, he considered it a greater miracle that he was able to get it published. Plagued by a chronic lack of funds and turned down by his academic associates and all other sources, Dr. Williams mortgaged his home. Then another obstacle arose. Due to his rapidly failing eyesight, he was forced to abandon his earlier plans for an expanded three-volume work and had to settle for a condensed version of his research into a single volume. The book we now know as The Destruction of Black Civilization. Great Issues of a Race from 4,500 B.C. to 2,000 A.D. What did you find out about ancient African civilizations? Well, to begin with, I found out that uh, uh, ancient African civilization was, first of all, the beginning of civilization. I found out that there could be no uh, record found anywhere that antedates the advanced civilization of Africa. And this was the finding of uh, European and other scholars. Uh, and they were now gradually admitting it. And when the evidence became overwhelming, the question arose, could Africans have achieved all this? Could Africans have achieved this remarkable uh, work in architecture that could be traced back for thousands of years before Christ? before Western civilization had even started. Could Africans have done this? Could Africans have achieved this high advance in mathematics, in physics, in chemistry, in medicine, and so forth? I mean, many of the things we now glorify as modern. Uh, Tick, the Washington Monument, for example, which is an exact uh, a duplication of uh, ancient Af African architecture which is so uh, well known. And uh, most of the columns we see on these stately columns on buildings, which, which the Greeks, in studying in Africa, are borrowed from uh, the, uh, the Africans, remodeled them at, at uh, Doria, at Corinth, and so forth, gave these columns the name of the city in which they remodeled them and uh, gave them a Greek character. They really didn't do much changing. They merely removed the African acanthus leaf at the column and uh, uh, modified, uh, but otherwise it, it was uh, substantially the same as African. Dr. Williams, uh, were there ever laws uh, and rules that governed the entire continent of Africa? There, there were laws and rules that governed the entire continent in the same sense that you have uh, the same uh, system of laws and rules that uh, which uh, uh, govern uh, a whole people without the same time having a single government a single state spreading over a whole continent, the second largest in the world. In other words, I'm saying that uh, while Africa, in contradistinction to being a country, was the second largest co uh, continent on earth, uh, and while the African people at one time in history uh, occupied the whole continent, and while, while they were one people in their general culture, in their general uh, religion with s certain modification, in their general social laws, in their general uh, legal system, right on down the line in almost every avenue you could find, you could find that there was a, this kinship. 
The only thing that they fundamentally different, uh, or where they fundamentally differed, was where, of course, when when they divided up and formed separate states, or withdrew, or to form separate societies and develop uh, different languages uh, from the uh, from the segmentation or, or separation from what had been. Uh, a larger language group, uh, so that uh, the, you, there's, no, there's no problem at all in understanding that you had one people uh, occupying the continent without being under one single state. Dr. Williams, based on your research of history, is it accurate that democracy was born in Greece? No, democracy was not born in any one place. Uh, the record, as I indicate in this discussion on the chapter uh, dealing with the, the African Constitution, uh, birth of democracy, meaning birth of democracy in Africa, uh, I made it quite clear that uh, uh, democracy was a system that was natural among uh, the ancient peoples uh, in all stages of development, even, even the most primitive societies had their chiefs generally elected, and the, the chiefs were generally uh, subject to the will of the group. Uh, so it was nothing unusual about the, uh, the, uh, the head of the society uh, being subject to the will of the tribe, uh, which was one of the uh, early forms of, of social organization. Uh, the, 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 the family, the clan, the tribe, the nation, which is a progressive step. So that uh, in Africa, you will find that uh, back to t from times Im immemorial, uh, they had this, their own system of democracy. And it was this same system which could be found in every part of the African continent. The same fundamental laws, the same fundamental custom, no matter whether they were 5,000 miles apart, no matter whether the, the group had never come across the other group, they had the same system. That's why we know that they, we were dealing with substantially one people. So, so this, that, that democracy then, was so long, so many thousands of years before Greece, that the mention of Greece in connection with the, where democracy began could only bring smiles to the <laughs> face of any scholar who has really studied world history. What were some of the specific African cultures, civilizations? These uh, civilizations, uh, I refer to them, of course, generally as or the great kingdoms and the great, uh, or the empires uh, that existed uh, uh, all over the, the continent of Africa. Uh, to the south, perhaps the, the greatest, uh, at least one of the greatest, was the, the empire of uh, uh, Monomotapa, uh, of which uh, the present Zimbabwe is, uh, is a part of uh, what was once uh, a much larger empire, and then of course uh, the those uh, empires of Mali and of uh, of uh, Ghana, ancient Ghana, and of Songhai, and of the, of the Masi of uh, uh, states, and uh, uh, so on. Uh, many of the uh, these uh, countries had started in a period long before Christ was born. Ghana, for example, was. Uh, had uh, for over 400 kings listed before Christ was born. 
so, so that uh, uh, these were uh, ancient uh, empires. The, the most important thing here, though, to note about these empires and our uh, last name is that all the, all the, the, the people in, uh, in America, all the blacks or Africans in, in the America, came from this, uh, this, this area of great nations, of a great educational system, where the greatest university of the time in which these, these slaves were being brought to America still was flourishing in its glory. That is, of course, the University of Sankor. Uh, the great civilizations in Nigeria, all of these were advanced cultures. So these people didn't come, as they were told and, and came to believe uh, after uh, they were lost memory of, uh, of, of their, their homeland by the system of not allowing uh, people of the same language group to be sold on the same plantation, but scattering them uh, all over the South so that they, they, you wouldn't form a power, power base by having a, a lot of uh, Africans speaking the same language. So this helped to, to uh, by this breakdown of intercommunication among themselves, helped to them to uh, lose memory. But we were told, quite to the contrary, that we were from a land of savages, of cannibals. And except by the grace of God and the white man, we would have been a lost people, so we should be on our knees forever praying and thanking God that we were brought, even in slavery, to this land to escape the horrors of Africa. And this was brought in and drilled into us generation after generation. Until even today, after we've gone through from the kindergarten uh, through graduate school, the majority of blacks today uh, reject the idea of being called an Afro-American. Dr. Williams, if all of the things you say are true, if uh, uh, Africans had such advanced civilizations, uh, hundreds of, of kings and, and, and one uh, uh, African kings in one kingdom before Jesus Christ was born, how did Africans worldwide and Afro-Americans get in the shape they're in? How did these great kingdoms, this great civilization, fall to civilizations that were, didn't come along until thousands of years after theirs was, were already established? Well, it wasn't, it wasn't done overnight. The, the, their great empires were built uh, through their industry, through their enterprising, through their uh, uh, industry in so many fields, and the whole societies as I point out in the book, in practice all of them, were organized in lodges. That's, this, is where, this is where the, the organization of, uh, of uh, workers, but they, they, they regard themselves as, as uh, uh, craftsmen. And each, 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 each working group, whether it's building boats, or whether they were stone masons and brick masons, or whether they were carpenters or whatnot, each craft was organized into a lodge. In fact, the educational system was similarly organized on, 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 on a, a basis of, of, of three levels. And so you had uh, a, a society that went in for production. The people who, who were specialized in growing rice or cotton or peppers or what have you did so not as Africans do today. Africans hardly, you hardly get Africans generally today to go on a subsistent level. Just enough for themselves, as though they're scared to build a, produce a surplus for export and to sell to areas which do not produce the same things which they, which they produce and buy from the other people the things which the other people produce and which they don't have, which is trade, which is progress, which is the basis of wealth, Worldwide, see what they're talking about, Reaganism and that sort of stuff. There isn't anything new that Africans were doing that ten, tens of thousands of years ago, a system of life. So they had regular trading posts established in different villages in other countries. They had a trading routes that crossed the Sahara into other lands. 
with merchandise, camels loaded with merchandise of spices, whatever the people could do. They were an industrial people. And they uh, sold, and they would import as well as export. And th this, is what the, this is what made them great. I try to emphasize that they, when you talk about the great African empires, they didn't just become great overnight, just great, no. They became great by doing specific things. They were great people. They were an industrious people. They were builders. They were producers. The whole nation was fired to, to produce, and they were rewarded for their work. And so they, they built cities and so forth and so forth. And so this is why you had this, this great uh, 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 system of nation uh, building becoming so mighty. Now, how did they, why did they fall? They fell when, these, when, when this began to decline internally, and when the forces, the external uh, forces, over centuries of effort, finally gained the day. These nations had lost strict laws, barring foreigners from coming to the interior. Then the same system of gradually settling around the borders, that is foreign traders, and uh, supposed to be traders, but most of them were uh, uh, geographers and others representing the foreign, would, uh, would establish little trading posts, just ask the permission to establish trading posts on the border. We don't want to come in, we don't come in, you can, we just want to do business with you. We want to sell you what we have, we want to buy some of what you have. Well, the Africans are great traders, always great traders. So that was one of the, the weaknesses. They allowed them to settle around the borders, for one thing. The second thing that happened, and this went on, as I point out in the destruction, for several thousand years before uh, the, the certain countries were finally uh, taken. And when they were taken, like Egypt, look how many times Egypt was taken and retaken. You say blacks gave up Egypt. Are you saying the Egyptians were black? Of course the Egyptians were black. The name comes from the, 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 the name itself. It has an origin in the, in the, the, uh, the, the name of a black king. So that uh, it became, uh, the Egyptians were black <laughs> until it became otherwise. Uh, they're not uh, black today. And uh, they're, they're uh, just like the, uh, those who occupy uh, the northern part of the Sudan uh, are not uh, black today. They are uh, 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 partly, uh, partly Arab, uh, mostly Arab, and uh, uh, some of them are mixed, Afro, the Afro-Arabs, you might call them. You spend uh, quite a bit of, uh, of time in your book describing the ancient civilization of Ethiopia. What is it you find important about that civilization? Well, the ancient civilization of Ethiopia was the, 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 uh, the civilization of what we're now talking about when we talk about that whole stretch of land from the Mediterranean uh, to the source of the Nile, which was ancient Ethiopia. So Egypt was nothing but uh, what we call Egypt now, which was Chim, uh, before the name was changed, uh, was nothing but the, a northern province of the Ethiopian Empire. You have a chapter here, Ethiopia's oldest daughter, Egypt. And I'd like to read you a statement you made and get you to comment on it. You say, the melting pot of the races began around the northern perimeter. The end result was always the same. The blacks were pushed to the bottom of the social economical and political ladder whenever and wherever the Asians and their mulatto offsprings gain control. Why is that? Why, why if with this advanced African civilization, when they interfaced with, with members of other groups, why did the members of that civilization always end up on the bottom of the ladder? Uh, we have always been, as I uh, repeatedly point out, uh, the race of brotherhood seekers. We have been the one who forever have carried on the drive for brotherhood with other people. 
They have never sought brotherhood with us, never, except for expediency, where they saw an opportunity uh, to play the role of big brother for a while, while they uh, uh, gain con effective control. Now, uh, they're cunning, you see. They study us, and they, they know this. They have, they have certain basic advantages. They can easily win our confidence, first of all, because Africa, the whole continent of Africa, was known as the land of the religious people. Uh, we, we were always, we didn't start the, all this religion in America, you know, being more religious than the whites. No, this is an African characteristic. We were, uh, we were known from ancient times as the land of the spiritual people, the land of the gods, you know, because we were so religious. The blameless people, homeless wrote, uh, we, we were so religious. Uh, so this must be kept in, kept in mind in, in this general, general appraisal. How significant was the oral historian in the reconstruction of African history? Well, the oral historian was indispensable if you're going to uh, if you're going to make a comparative study of history in which you're going to, you're going to compare uh, what had been written, and since it all was written by foreigners, uh, with what the, the Africans themselves had written and the records of their mind, and the records and the records of their mind turned out to be <laughs> as, as uh, accurate, as uh, unerring in many respects as, uh, as uh, what is written in, in, in books.